Welcome back everyone, today we are tackling a really interesting challenge called max.product of two subsequences, this is problem number 1458, on leet code. It is marked as hard, but don't let that intimidate you, we are going to break it down step by step until the solution feels natural, let's get started. Here is the problem. We are given two lists of numbers, which we'll call nums1 and nums2. Our goal is to pick a subsequence from each list that have the same length and are not empty. Then, we need to calculate their dot product and find the absolute maximum value possible. Remember, a subsequence means we can skip some numbers, but we must keep the relative order the same. Let's look at some examples to see how this works in practice. Before we dive into the math, let's make sure we are clear on what a subsequence is. If we have a list, we can create a subsequence by deleting zero or more elements. The key is that the elements we keep must stay in their original relative order. So if we take 2 and then negative 2 from the first example, that's fine. But we cannot take 5 and then 2, because 5 comes after 2 in the original list. The dot product is pretty straightforward. You take the first element from both subsequences and multiply them. Then you take the second elements, multiply them, and add that to the first result. You keep doing this for the whole length. Our job is to pick the right numbers from both lists to make this final total as large as possible. Let's walk through the first example. We have the list nums1 and nums2. We could pick the 2 and the negative 2 from the first list, and the 3 and the negative 6 from the second list. Multiplying them gives us 6 and 12. Adding those together gives us 18. This turns out to be the best we can do. Notice how we skip the 1 and the 5 in the first list, and the 0 in the second list to maximize our score. We also need to handle cases where all possible products might be negative. Since the problem says the subsequences must be non-empty, we have to pick at least one pair. In this example, any pair we pick will result in negative 1. So the maximum dot product is actually negative 1. We can't just return 0. Our solution needs to be smart enough to account for this. Just a quick heads up. We will be walking through the logic and the full solution using Python. But if you're a fan of Java, C++ or JavaScript, don't worry. I have prepared the full code for those languages as well and I will show them at the end of the video, so you can pause and study them. The best way to solve this is using dynamic programming. The idea is to build up the solution by looking at smaller versions of the lists. We will use a two-dimensional table where each cell represents the best score we can get using prefixes of our two lists. Let's call the index for the first list i, and the index for the second list j. At every single cell in our table, we have a few decisions to make. First, we can choose to pair up the current numbers from both lists. We multiply them and add any positive score we found earlier in the table. Or, we could decide that the current number in the first list doesn't help, so we just take the best score from the previous row. Similarly, we could skip the current number in the second list and take the best score from the previous column. We just take the maximum of all these possibilities. Before we look at the code, let's talk about the real reason people struggle with lead code. It is not that the algorithms are impossible. It is just hard to stay consistent. I created an app called My Daily To Do to solve exactly this. You can add daily leak code as a routine task. It resets every morning, helping you build that momentum. It is the same system I use to make sure I upload these videos every single day. Check it out if you want to make your coding habit stick. I also want to be totally transparent. I am an indie developer, so I'm committed to keeping current free features free forever. As the app grows and I add more advanced features like CloudSync, those will be part of a premium plan to help cover my costs. If you join now, you get to be part of the community early on. Now let's get back to the code and see how we implement that dynamic programming table we talked about. Here is the full Python implementation. We start by getting the lengths of both lists and initializing our table with a very small number, like negative infinity. Then we loop through every possible combination of indices. Inside the loop, we calculate the product of the current two numbers and apply the logic we discussed to fill in the table. Finally, the answer will be in the very last cell of our table. Let's look closer at the setup. We create a two-dimensional list which is our table. We make it slightly larger than our input lists by adding an extra row and column. This helps us handle the boundaries easily without needing a bunch of extra checks. We fill it with a very small number because, as we saw with the negative example, the maximum product could be a negative value. This is the heart of the algorithm. For every cell at row i and column j, we calculate the product of the current numbers. Then we use the max function to pick the winner. We compare the current product alone, the product added to the previous diagonal best, and the best scores from just above or just to the left. 
This ensures that we are always carrying forward the highest possible dot product we have found so far. How efficient is this? Well, the time complexity is big O of n times m, where n and m are the lengths of our two lists. This is because we visit every cell in our table exactly once. The space complexity is also big O of n times m because we are storing that entire table in memory. With the constraints given this solution is very fast, and will easily pass all tests. We have finished the deep dive into the Python solution. Now as I promised I'm going to show the implementations for Java, C++ and JavaScript. I won't be explaining these in detail since the logic is identical, so feel free to pause the video on the language you are most comfortable with, to see how the syntax changes. Here is the Java version. Notice we use a large negative integer to represent our starting values. You can pause the video here to review the nested loops and the maximum comparisons. And here is the C++ solution. It's very clean, especially using the initializer list for the max function to compare all four choices at once. Feel free to pause and check out the implementation details. Finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. We use array.from plus to create our grid and infinity for our initial values. The logic remains the same. Take a moment to look it over, if this is your language of choice. Let's wrap up with some final thoughts. Using a dynamic programming table is a powerful technique for any problem involving subsequences. The trickiest part here was making sure we handled the case where all products are negative, which we did by initializing with a very small number and correctly choosing when to start over or add on. Keep these patterns in mind for your next coding challenge. If you found this breakdown helpful and you want more, I have launched a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. I will be posting solutions to even more problems there, from easy to hard, to help you prepare for your technical interviews. There is a link in the description, so go ahead and check it out. Thanks so much for watching. If this helped you understand dynamic programming a little better, please hit that like button and subscribe for daily leak code breakdowns. If you have questions or a different way to solve it, leave a comment below. I also have links to the tablet I use for sketching out logic if you're interested. And if you're feeling generous, there is always the Boba Fund. Happy coding, and I will see you in the next one.